So, what are tissues? So, we can say a tissue is an ensemble of cells, not necessarily identical, but from the same origin that together carry out a specific function. These are called tissues because of their identical functioning. So, tissue can be defined as a group of cells similar in structure, origin and function. So, organs are then formed by the functional grouping together of multiple tissues. The study of tissue is called histology and the term was used by Bichet. Actually, Gru already coined the term tissues but he coined this term for plant tissue. So, Bichet is considered as father of histology and Marcelo Melpiki founded a separate branch for the study of tissues and called it histology. So students, now types of tissues. Actually animal tissues are not differentiated into simple and complex tissues like plants. Instead, there are four types of fundamental tissues and these are connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue and nervous tissue. Now, different type of tissues can be found in different organs and there may be various sub tissues within each of the primary tissues. So, depending upon their functions and location, tissues are divided into four types. The first one is epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissue originates from ectoderm or from endoderm or from mesoderm. Actually, the tissues develop in the embryonic stage from any of three primary germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm or mesoderm. Now, the functions of epithelial tissue, protection, it protects from abrasion, chemicals, infection, drying of skin, etc. It also helps in secretion when it is glandular, lubrication with help of mucus and oily secretions, absorption for example intestine and many more works like transport, formation of gametes, sensations, contractibility etc. Second one is connective tissue or you can also say it's supportive tissue. This tissue is made up of matrix and its origin is from mesoderm. It also has a role in body defense, tissue repair, fat storage and blood circulation. The third one is muscular tissue. The origin of muscular tissue is mesoderm. It is a contractile tissue of animals and its function is produce force and cause motion. Muscles can cause either locomotion of the organism itself or movement of internal organs. The fourth one is nervous tissue. It is a tissue of ectodermal origin which is connected with reception, integration and transmission of stimuli or impulses. Now, we will study about characteristics of epithelial tissue. In general, epithelial tissue covers the whole surface of the body. Like your skin is composed of epithelial tissue, it also lines your body cavities and major organs. This tissue is specialized to form the covering or lining of all internal and external body surfaces. So, the first characteristic is the cells of epithelial tissue are placed very close to each other, separated by very thin layers of extracellular material. This is well known that epithelial cells are packed tightly together with almost no intercellular spaces and only a small amount of intercellular substance. So, why it is so? See, if the cells were not adjoined to one another, it would be a leaky border and this would be no good. Liquids from inside us would drop out. Ha! Huh? Funny na? Fair. So, the cells of epithelial cells are closely packed. Second one is, the neighboring cells are held together by cell junctions. Means, it is composed of tightly clustered cells connected by tight junctions and desmosomes. Third one, the epithelial tissue rests on a non-cellular appeasement membrane which separates the epithelial tissue from the underlying connecting tissue. The meaning of this line is that epithelial tissue is usually separated from the underlying tissue by a thin sheet of basement membrane which is non-cellular in character that is no cellular element is there. And this basement membrane provides structural support for the epithelium and also binds it to neighboring structures. The next characteristic is what I have told you in earlier slide that the basement membrane is a non-cellular membrane and it is composed of two layers. The upper layer called basal lamina 
and the thick layer which is lower called reticular lamina upper layer is composed of glycoproteins and mucopolysaccharides and the lower layer is composed of reticular fibers and collagen fibers this is a composition of basement membrane next point is blood vessels are not present in epithelial tissue actually epithelial layers are avascular or you can say it these are without blood vessels so they must receive nourishment by the way of diffusion of substances from the underlying connective tissue to the basement membrane and the next one is basement membrane act as a diffusion membrane or materials are exchanged between epithelial cells and vessels of the connective tissue by diffusion through the basement membrane that is the basement membrane acts as a selectively permeable membrane that determines which substance will be able to enter the epithelium the next is epithelial tissue regenerate and repair quickly actually cells within this tissue readily divide to make more cells this helps this tissue recover after any sort of abrasion occur now classification of epithelial tissue actually epithelial tissues are generally classified by the morphology of their cells and the number of layers they are composed of it is divided into two type of tissues the first one is simple and the second one is compound epithelial tissue now simple epithelium is further divided into following types of tissues depending upon the morphology of their cells these are squamous simple epithelium cubical simple epithelium ciliated epithelium columnar epithelium and pseudostratified epithelium these are the subdivisions of simple epithelium tissue now compound tissue compound tissues are further divided into stratified and transitional tissues and stratified is further divided into stratified squamous and stratified cubical stratified squamous has following subdivisions keratinized and non keratinized so first of all we'll study about simple epithelium you can see here the picture of simple epithelium it is composed of single layer of cells and adjacent cells are held together with desmosomes and resting on the basement membrane and these are mainly found on secretory and absorptive surfaces like intestine etc now simple epithelium helps in nutrition excretion secretion but not for protecting the underlying tissue students every epithelial cell is in direct contact with the underlying basement membrane which acts as a selective permeable membrane so it is generally found where absorption and filtration occur and moreover the thinness of the epithelial barrier facilitates these processes but it won't protect the underlying tissue and what is this underlying tissue this is connective tissue so epithelial cell helps in nutrition excretion secretion but not for protecting the underlying connective tissue the next is it is found in the lining of gut mucous membrane skin etc it's simple because simple epithelium cell secretes fluids that lubricate tissues to minimize friction as organs or other body structures rub against one another other simple epithelial line body tracts as protective absorptive or secretory cells and all glands of the body are constituted of epithelial cells as are the ducts that connect the exocrine types to body surfaces that's why it's found in the lining of gut mucous membrane etc now you can see here the pictures of different type of simple epithelial cell simple squamous simple columnar stratified cubical and simple cubical as i have already told simple epithelial tissues are generally classified by the shape of their cells whether it is squamous shape columnar shape cuboid like shape etc now types of simple epithelium tissue the first one is squamous epithelium as the name implies squamous epithelium is like a square the cells are like a square so the first point is it consists of a layer of thin flat cells fitted together like the tiles of floor that's why also known as pavement membrane the squamous cells have the appearance of thin flat plates they fit closely together in tissues providing a smooth low friction surface over which fluid can move easily the second is central nucleus is in mature protrusion actually the shape of the nucleus in squamous epithelium usually corresponds to the cell form and helps to identify the type of epithelium and generally squamous cells tend to have horizontally flattened elliptical nuclei 
because of the thin flattened form of the cell and squamous epithelium are also of two types smooth squamous epithelium the cells have a smooth surface and tessellated epithelium the outline of cell is wavy or you can say it is irregular next squamous epithelium forms the inner lining of lung alveoli and blood vessels Classically, squamous epithelia are found lining surfaces utilizing simple passive diffusion such as alveolar epithelium in the lungs. And some specialized squamous epithelium also form the lining of cavities such as blood vessels and the major cavities found within the bodies. Now, another one is cubical epithelium. Again, the name implies the cells are roughly cuboidal in shape. You can see here. Roughly cuboidal in shape cells appearing square in cross section, and each cell has a spherical nucleus in the center. You can see here, and cuboidal epithelium is commonly found in the secretive or absorptive tissue. For example, the secretive exocrine gland, the pancreas, which act as absorptive and lining of the kidney tubules, as well as in the ducts of the glands. They also constitute the germinal epithelium that covers the female ovary. At a level, I told you that it participates in secretion, excretion, and absorption. The most interesting point is this: the cells of cubical epithelium in absorptive surface often bear microvilli on their free ends. Microvilli are like ciliated structure, and it is also called a brush border. Okay, so a brush border is the name for the microvilli, and microvilli cover surface of simple cuboidal epithelium cells found in certain locations of the body. and the fuzzy appearance of microvilli gave rise to the term brush border so microvilli gives a brush like appearance to their free ends their hence called brush bordered cubical epithelial cells and brush bordered cells are found in two main locations the small intestine tract and the kidneys here the microvilli is useful in distinguishing the proximal tubule actually microvilli increases the cell surface area a trait which is specially useful in absorptive cells cells that absorb substances need a large surface area in contact with the substance to be efficient now columnar epithelium you can see here the picture columnar epithelium cells are like columns so cells of columnar epithelium are elongated or column shape and their nuclei are elongated and are usually located near the base of the cells and columnar epithelium present on the inner surface of the intestine stomach and gall bladder actually columnar epithelium forms the lining of the stomach intestine and gall bladder because here it helps in secretion or absorption here again the intestinal mucosa is lined by brush bordered columnar epithelium which is highly absorptive the next one is ciliated epithelium why we are calling it ciliated epithelium because it possesses cilia you can see here the cilia so these are simple cuboidal or columnar it is of any shape whether it will be cuboidal or columnar so these are simple cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells but in addition they possess fine hair like outer cilia on their free surface and function of cilia is to move particles free cells or mucus in a specific direction over the epithelial surface actually These cilia are capable of rapid rhythmic wave like beatings in a certain directions this movement causes the mucus which is secreted by the goblet cells to move in that direction it is present in the inner surface of fallopian tubes bronchioles and small bronchi so it is usually found in the air passages like the nose or in the uterus and fallopian tubes of females so here movement of cilia propel the ovum to the uterus again ciliated columnar epithelium present in the ventricles of brain is spinal cord and is called as a ependyma cilia is of two type kinocilia and stereocilia and the organization are in kinocilia the organization of cilia are 9 plus 2 and in stereocilia these are non motile and the organization is absent so what is the meaning of 9 plus 2 organization here actually this is an internal structure of cilia a cilium usually motile having nine peripheral double microtubules and two single central ones what i have said a cilium usually motile having nine peripheral double microtubules and two single central ones that's why the organization is 9 plus 2 and these are found in some parts of the male reproductive tract such as epididymis and vas deferens 
weight helps for the flowing of sperm. Now, pseudo stratified epithelium. What is the meaning of pseudo? Pseudo means false or false stratified epithelium. Students, these are simple columnar epithelial cells whose nuclei appear at different heights. So, giving the misleading, I am calling it pseudo na. So, giving the misleading impression that the epithelium is stratified when the cells are viewed in cross section. In pseudo stratified epithelia, there appears to be many layers of cells, but actually all cells rest on the basement membrane, though not all reach the surface. That's why we are calling it pseudo stratified epithelium. Here, some cells are shorter than the others with their nuclei at the different level. That's why their nuclei at a different level. That's why they are giving the misleading of pseudo stratified epithelium. In here, shorter cells do not have cilia and longer cells have cilia. So, shorter cells, so shorter cells help the mucus secreted locally by the globular cells to flow in that direction, typically out of the body. And in ciliated epithelium, it is found in the airways, nose, bronchi, and is also found in uterus, fallopian tubes of females, where cilia propels the ovum to uterus, or where cilia helps to remove mucus. Stereostratified non ciliated columnar epithelium is found in urethra of male and parotid salivary gland. So, pseudostratified non ciliated epithelia is found in urethra of male and large salivary gland that is parotid. Compound epithelium is multilayered epithelium where cells of only the lowermost basal layer are in contact with basement membrane. So, it consists of more than two layers. Deepest layer rests on the basement membrane and being multilayered, it does not perform the role of secretion or absorption because compound epithelium is multilayered. So, due to its thickness, it will not play or it is not playing any role in secretion or absorption. So, we can conclude that it is found where body linings have to withstand wear and tear because it is thick in nature. Again, compound epithelium are of two types and these are the first one is stratified epithelium. This is multilayer, okay, and cells flatten as the layer become more apical, though in their most basal layers the cells can be squamous, cuboidal or columnar. Actually, in stratified epithelium, the top cells are flat and scaly and these tissues do not contain junctional complexes like simple epithelium and their cells bound together by desmosomes. You learned earlier You learned earlier that in sim you learned earlier that in simple epithelium cells are joined together by cell junctions. Here in compound epithelium cells are bound together by desmosomes. So this is the main difference between simple epithelium and compound epithelium. In stratified compound epithelium there are following specializations that is creatinized and non-creatinized. Top cells are flat and scaly and they are creatinized. What is creatine? Creatine is a tough resistant protein like mammalian skin. Mammalian skin is a good example of dry creatinized stratified epithelium. Why it is dry? Because they lose their nucleus and cytoplasm and instead deposit it on the apical layers of the cell. So like skin, hair, nail, they all possess creatinized tissues. Non-creatinized, they are live tissues soft without the deposition of creatin and they found in vagina, cornea, buccal cavity, esophagus etc. Uncreatinized or non-creatinized epithelium are also found in the mouth. Next is transitional epithelium or you can also say it urothelium. It is also a form of compound epithelium. It is much thinner and more stretchable than the stratified epithelium. Transitional epithelium is a type of tissue consisting of multiple layers of epithelial cells which can contract and expand. These are found in the urinary bladder 
or in the ureters and in the superior urethra and gland ducts of the prostate this specialized structure of transition epithelium helps to accommodate fluctuation of volume of the liquid in an organ such as the urinary bladder such and protect against a caustic effect of urine you can see here the picture of transition epithelium all these previous tissues are classified under proper section but histologists have identified two more tissues and these are neuroepithelial tissue and myoepithelial tissues you can also say them modified epithelial tissue neuroepithelial tissue or sensory epithelium are cells having sensory hair on free surface and connected with nerve fibers on the other surface these are generally columnar cells that receives and conveys stimuli for example nasal epithelium taste buds retina sensory spots of internal ear etc the second one is myoepithelial cells these epithelium made of fusiform or stellate cells having myosin and actin these are muscle proteins that's why these cells are capable of contraction and these are found in ducts and glandular portion of glands like sweat salivary or mammary glands now in gland categories first of all exocrine glands these are the glands that secrete their products including hormones and other chemical messengers into ducts which lead directly into the external environment understood like sweat glands salivary glands mammary glands stomach liver pancreas etc another one is endocrine glands they are the counterparts to exocrine glands which secrete their products like hormones directly into the blood stream for example adrenal gland which is found on top of the kidneys and secretes a hormone adrenaline among others another one is unicellular or multicellular glands as the name denotes unicellular means single cell uni means one so this is single cell gland for example goblet cells of alimentary canal and the other is multicellular multicellular means cluster of cells multi cells multicellular glands are composed of several cells a multicellular exocrine gland has a duct and a secretory portion so duct is unbranched in simple glands and branched in compound glands now single cell so single cell glands are glands that have unbranched duct and secretory portion and multicellular glands or compound glands are those which have both the duct and the secretory portion are branched so the secretory part of the gland consists of two parts tubes and sacs so in compound glands tubes and sacs both are branched and in single cell glands tubes and sacs both are unbranched so tubular glands or goblet glands are examples of single cell glands and pancreas and submandibular salivary glands are the example of compound glands now types of glands now there are four types of glands first of all is exocrine glands glands that execute secretion into a ductual system or glands that have ducts endocrine glands these execute their secretions directly into the organ ultimately blood mixed glands are those glands that contains the properties of both type of glands exocrine glands and endocrine glands like liver paracrine glands paracrine glands are those glands in which the cell filled with secretory product disintegrates during discharge of the products for example sebaceous gland now modes of secretion that is how the products whether it is hormone mucus anything else leave the cell so modes of secretion so according to the mode of secretion the glands can be of three types first one is mirocrine gland in which secretion is discharged through diffusion for example sweat glands another one is apocrine gland in which glandular secretion accumulates in the terminal part of the cell which is pinched off for example mammary glands the third one is holocrine glands in which cell dies during secretion for example sebaceous glands so understood 
there are three types of glands on the basis of their modes of secretions these are mediocrine glands apocrine glands and holocrine glands so you should not confuse about the type of glands first of all we have studied about two types of glands based on their based on presence of ducts and absence of ducts and these were exocrine glands and endocrine glands the third one was unicellular and multicellular now on the basis of the mode of secretion there are three types of glands mediocrine apocrine holocrine glands and there is one more type of glands and that were the types of glands like exocrine glands endocrine glands mixed glands and paracrine glands so i have repeated the previous slides so that you should not confuse about the type of glands now you can see here the pictures of three type of glands mediocrine gland where secretion is happening through diffusion apocrine gland where glandular secretion accumulates in the terminal part of the cell which is pinched off you can see here the cell fragment and third one is holocrine gland where cell is damaged during secretion new cell is forming through mitosis these are the picture of three types of glands mediocrine gland apocrine gland and holocrine gland now let's take some examples to better understand previous topic the first one from aipmt 1994 the first example from aipmt 1994 and this is an epithelial tissue which has thin flat cells arranged edge to edge so as to appear like closely packed tiles is found to be present at and the options are a outer surface of ovary b inner lining of fallopian tube c inner lining of stomach and d inner lining of cheeks so guess students what is the right answer can you guess the right answer is the right answer is inner lining of cheeks because the closely packed tiles of epithelial tissue known as non keratinized stratified squamous epithelial cover the closely packed tiles of epithelial tissue known as non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium cover moist parts of body and these are the lining of cheeks next is from aipmt 1997 and the question is stratum germinativum is an example of which kind of epithelium in the options are columnar squamous cuboidal and ciliated tell the right answer quick quick the right answer is columnar so stratum germinativum is an example of columnar epithelium next from aipmt 1997 and this is basement membrane is made up of you recall basement membrane okay so basement membrane is made up of options are no cell product of epithelium or epidermal cell only or endodermal cell or both b and c so basement membrane underlies the epithelial tissue it protects the overlying cells so there is no cell protective epithelium so basement membrane is not the cell protective epithelium because it underlies the epithelium so the right answer is no cell protective epithelium you can better understand from this explanation another one is from aipmt 2002 melanin protects from and the options are uv rays visible rays infrared rays or x rays guess can you guess just guess and the answer is simple melanin protects from uv rays next one is from aipmt 2007 and the question is 
in which one of the following preparations are you likely to come across cell junctions most frequently and your options are thrombocytes tendon hyaline cartilage or ciliated epithelium and i know you know the right answer you know and the right answer is ciliated epithelium so what is cell junction did you recall yeah cell junctions join adjacent cells these are mostly found in epithelium they contact between adjacent cells and they control paracellular transport now another type of tissue is connective tissue as the name implies connective tissue serves as connecting function it has following characteristics like it is a tissue made of matrix and living cells that connects binds and supports different tissues or organs it also has a role in body defense tissue repair fat storage etc connective tissue is mesodermal in origin and it is made up of fibers forming a framework and support structure for body tissue and organs now types of connective tissue connective tissue can be classified into following type the first one is connective tissue proper second one is supportive connective tissue in which bone and cartilage tissue comes third one is fluid connective tissue blood represents fluid connective tissue connective tissue proper is further divided into loose connective tissue in which areolar tissue and adipose tissue come and dense connective tissue in which ligament tendon and white fibrous connective tissue come so first of all adipose tissue which comes in loose connective tissue adipose tissue is a type of loose connective tissue that is specialized to synthesize store and metabolize fat the tissue occurs in subcutaneous or dermis region cushion of eye orbits around heart blood vessels around kidneys and in bone marrow you can see here the picture of adipose tissue these are the fat cells or you can also say it adipocytes which are the globules of sterin or olein or palmitin and these are white and yellow elastic fibers the fat stored in this tissue comes from dietary fats or is produced in the body sometimes the stored food in adipose come from the body when much fat is accumulated in the body it is stored in the form of adipose tissue when you take some heavy meals like butter cream all these and when this is extra into your body that is also accumulated in adipose tissue like fat globules adipose tissue also contain fat cells or adipocytes and cytoplasm in fat cells is narrow and peripheral with nucleus on one side the another one is areolar tissue areolar tissue is also a type of loose connective tissue areolar tissue contain both white collagen fiber for tensile strength and yellow elastin fibers for elasticity you can see in this picture white fiber for tensile strength fiber and yellow elastic fibers for elasticity these contain both type of fibers for preventing displacement and injury to tissues and organs while allowing their limited movement for example skin with muscles internal organs with one another and the elastic walls of internal organs like elementary canal blood vessels it is also regarded as typical connective tissue proper as it contains all the living cells and fibers and the main functions of areolar tissue is to provide support strength and elasticity these tissue contains three type of cell fibroblast macrophage and mast cells in which macrophages destroy foreign particles microbes and dermis cells mast cell produce histamine at the place of injury and fibroblast provides strength and elasticity to the areolar tissue now mast cell now 
as i have already told you fifth bar secret major amount of matrix and macrophage or histocytes or plasmocytes are phagocytic in nature and mast cell produce histamine heparin and serotonin all these granules causes inflammation and this attracts phagocytes plasma cell synthesizes antibodies that helps in phagocytosis and the main function of areolar tissue is to keep the organ in the normal shape 